Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this problem, we're going to integrate um, the absolute value of x cubed minus x from negative 4 to 4. So recall that whenever you have an absolute value, the definition of absolute value is a piecewise function. It's equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's equal to minus x if x is less than 0. And so the goal in these problems, when you have absolute values in integrals, is to eliminate the absolute value. So we typically use this definition to do that. So we're going to care about when this is positive and when it's negative. So if it's positive, so like if, if we know x cubed minus x is greater than 0, then using this definition, uh, the absolute value of x cubed minus x, you just, get, you just get x cubed minus x, right? You use this one here, right? You just replace x with x cubed minus x. If it's less than 0, so if x cubed minus x is less than 0, then the absolute value of x cubed minus x, well, that's just negative parentheses x cubed minus x, right? You use the second uh, piece here. All right, so we have to think about when it's positive and when it's negative. So let's look at the graph of x cubed minus x. So if you factor out an x, you get x parentheses x squared minus 1. And then you can factor this further. It's x, x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay. And if you set this equal to 0, it gives you three x-intercepts. Uh, you get 0, 1, and negative 1. And all of them have an odd multiplicity. The multiplicity is the number you see here, these 1s. So that means they all cross the x-axis. Remember, if the multiplicity of a 0 is odd, uh, the graph crosses the x-axis there. If it's even, it touches and turns around. Also, this has an odd degree. Lots of knowledge here. And a positive leading coefficient. So via the leading coefficient test, that means this function, its end behavior, is similar to x cubed. So it falls left and rises right. So it falls left, rises right. I suppose you could use a calculator to graph it, but this is from the uh, MIT uh, Integration B qualifying exam. So I don't think they, uh, I doubt they allow calculators. <laughs> um, so falls left, rises right. So now we can graph this bad boy. So it's going to look something like this. So here's 0. Here's negative 1, here's 1, and so it falls left, boom, 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 crosses at negative 1, crosses at 0, crosses at 1, boom, that's the graph. And we want to integrate this thing from negative 4 to 4, so let me plot negative 4 on the graph. So here's negative 4, and then here's 4. So we're integrating from here to, uh, to here, okay, that's where we're integrating from. All righty, so um, let's do it. We can break it up into four integrals. We could probably use symmetry and take a shortcut. Um, let's just do four integrals. So we have uh, the definite integral from negative 4 to 4. Absolute value x cubed minus x dx. And this is equal to, so let's just break it up one piece at a time just for clarity. Um, so from negative 4 to negative 1, it's going to be negative. So we're, it's going to be this. So from negative 4 to negative 1, it's negative parentheses x cubed minus x dx. Okay? Plus, then from negative 1 to 0, it's up here, so it's positive. So from negative 1 to 0, it's simply x cubed minus x parentheses dx. Plus, from 0 to 1, it's negative, so it has the negative piece. So 0 to 1, it's negative, x cubed minus x, dx. And then from 1 to 4, it's positive, so plus 1 to 4, x cubed minus x, dx. Again, I'm pretty sure we could have used symmetry to take a shortcut, um, but let's just grind it out. It's not so bad. So this is equal to, so it's, oh, let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to integrate and distribute at the same time here. So it'll be negative x to the 4 over 4 using the power rule. Okay. Plus, right, negative and negative is positive, x squared over 2. What a beautiful green color. And we're going from negative 4 to negative 1. Plus, the next one will be x to the 4 over 4 minus x squared over 2. Just integrating easily with the power rule. Negative 1 to 0. Plus, again, distributing and, and integrating at the same time. So negative x to the 4 over 4 plus x squared over 2. And we're going from 0 to 1. Plus, integrating again, x to the 4 over 4 minus x squared over 2. 
and then integrating from one to four. All right, so let's get some stuff uh, figured out here before we start plugging in numbers. You'll notice we're gonna plug in four multiple times. And when, so when we do that, we're gonna get um, negative, negative four to the four over four. This is gonna be a common occurrence here. So four to the four is 256. And when you divide it by four, you get 64. So this is equal to 64, okay? Uh, when we plug in negative one, it's just gonna become, a, um, it's gonna become this. Right, it's going to become negative 1, because this piece here is 1. So plugging in negative 1, we get negative 1 fourth. Okay. Uh, and then here we get plus 1 half, right, because you square the negative 1, and so uh, it becomes a 1. Minus, parentheses, plugging in the negative 4, right, but that's a negative 64 there, I messed up. It's a negative 64. This is going to be uh, negative 64. And then plugging in the negative 4 here, it's negative 4 squared over 2, right? So negative 4 squared over 2 is 16 over 2. So that's 8. Okay, so plus 8. I'm trying to, trying to save some, some work here. So doing the 4s, uh, you know, working those out fully. Plus, that's this plus here. Plugging in 0 for all of this, you just get 0. So 0 minus plugging in negative 1, we get 1 fourth minus 1 half. That takes care of that. Plus, plugging in 1, we get minus 1 fourth plus 1 half. And then minus 0, so I'm not going to write it. right? When you plug in the 0, everything goes away. Plus, plugging in 4, we worked it out already. Uh, that should be a positive 64 this time. Minus, and then we worked it out already. This is 8 minus, and then 1 fourth minus 1 half. Yikes. Yikes. Really, really crazy. All right, let's see what in the world is going on here. <laughs> so, um, so negative, um, let's just add up the numbers. So negative one-fourth plus one-half. You could think of one-half as two-fourths. So this is just going to be one-fourth. Okay, so this is one-fourth. Uh, and then here, negative 64 uh, plus eight is uh, 50, negative 56. And when you have a negative here, it's just going to become a positive 56. So that's, that's, that's all of this, right? Because uh, it's negative 56, and a negative is a positive. So let's see over here what's going on. 1 fourth minus 1 half is really 1 fourth minus 2 fourths. That's negative 1 fourth, but there's a negative here, so it's a plus 1 fourth. That takes care of this. Negative 1 fourth plus 1 half, that's really 2 fourths. So this is a 1 fourth, so that takes care of that. 64 minus 8 is 56, so we have that. So that takes care of that. And then 1 fourth minus 1 half is 1 fourth minus 2 fourths. That's negative 1 fourth, but there's a negative here, so that gives us another positive 1 fourth. All right, so we have 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth. That's 4 fourths, that's 1. Then we have 56 plus 56, it's 112. So 1 plus 112 is 113. And that, my friends, is the correct answer. Wow, what a problem. So this was from the MIT uh, Integration B, one of the qualifying exams. Uh, pretty uh, intense problem. So I hope that made sense.